I've been pretty busy setting up infrastructure for my infrastructure. And what I mean by that is I've been setting up Azure DevOps and pipelines with Terraform to provision my managed services account. That's going to be the main infrastructure piece for the rest of my AWS environments. The centerpiece of this has been Azure DevOps, mainly the pipelines, mostly because I wanted to learn something new and it's a managed service outside of AWS. Why that was important is I didn't have to have an underlying platform or a VPC to host my CI CD toolchain. I can run it outside of AWS and not have to worry about having to create resources yet. But now that that's in place, I can start moving forward, creating some of the services and managed services that I want to use in my DevOps environment. For example, some of these services that I'm talking about would be um, an account vending machine so I can create standardized AWS resources, a golden Docker pipeline so I can create golden Docker images, and then centralized security and logging. It's going to be a big part of this account because it's since it's the organizational account, there's a lot of features that AWS enables and allows you to do with the root account. When you're creating resources with Terraform, there's a couple different stages of adoption you can go through. You can just go through a simple run it locally, create a few resources, and then you're done. But if you got multiple team members in large environments, that might not work and you probably shouldn't do it that way. The next step would be to make sure it's version controlled and then possibly maybe in type some type of pipeline. Your base set is gonna have just one main configuration folder. Let's just say, you know, this application environment, it'll have a main TF variables and outputs. You have all your configuration in there. This can work. But as your environment grows, the longer and longer it takes to make changes to this environment because it has to check configuration of all those resources just to say, change something simple like a name tag. It can work and it does work. If you're gonna do something at large scale, you have to be able to abstract each piece away because when you have everything in one big file, you increase your blast radius and increase the chance of messing something up completely. For instance, if someone were to run Terraform Destroy, they can destroy the whole environment. The next step is to abstract everything into nested directories. For instance, you have a prod and underneath there you have a compute layer, a networking layer, an application layer, a database layer. And each of those you can abstract further down by regions or workloads. And what this allows you to do is to have separate configurations for your different components and workloads. And that allows you to make changes to each one individually without impacting each but it comes with its own pain points. And it's, if you ask me, it's kind of brittle. But people do it and I decided to do it. I might not be the biggest fan of it at this time. Um, as you'll see at this end of the video, I'll kind of give some more points on what my opinion is for infrastructure pipelines with Terraform. All right, now that we're in Azure DevOps, you can see my Terraform pipeline that I'm using for my root account. And it has two stages. One stage is a Terraform plan, and the other is a stage for a Terraform apply. If we go in here and actually edit it, let me change this to development. And we can see 134 lines just to run two Terraform commands. You might think this is very complex, and it is, and I would agree with you all the way, but you might need this complexity. It might be overkill for what I'm doing, but it's a learning experience and also want to be able to demonstrate how you can run Terraform in Azure pipeline to create AWS resources. One of the growing pains I had with Azure DevOps is coming from a GitLab CI background, whereas your jobs can either run on a runner or in a container and everything for your build process exists on that container as it runs. And when it's done, it's gone. With Azure DevOps or in Azure pipelines, each stage and each step has a pristine environment because they focus on artifacts. So your first job needs to produce an artifact for the second step or stage to consume. I didn't know that and it would have saved me a lot of time if I'd have read the manual first time. With this focus on artifacts, the very first thing I had to do is create an artifact directory and I'll show you why. Right here, this we're here at a create artifact directory. The next part is this script here, which is how it figures out what Terraform configurations to make and why this is important is since I'm using Terragrunt in a nested directory module. So I have this path here, prod, storage, S3, logging bucket, and just one Terragrunt ACL file. If I have multiple different directories, such as compute, you know, VPC, networking layers, application layers, I need to be able to figure out which configuration files actually Terraform needs to check the changes for. To do that, you actually have to use a git diff 
and actually go through everything and figure out what the files were. And that's what I did here. I looked at the commit and then I actually parsed the path to look for any changes in TF, TFRs or HCL, set it to a variable and then actually output it. And you can see if it finds a change in the Terraform files, it'll set a variable to validated and then it'll continue on. If there wasn't a change to a Terraform file that would push a change to our environment, then it just wouldn't continue. If there is a change, then it'll move to the next step. Now you can see what we have to do to use to install Terraform and TerraGrunt. Azure DevOps has a very good feature where you can just have quick tasks for common things such as pulling images from Docker Hub or ECR, installing common packages. And that's what this Terraform installer task is. Just installs Terraform, puts it on the path, sets permissions, and you have to worry about it. It's not the same with TerraGrunt. TerraGrunt's the complete opposite where I actually had to get the binary, change the permissions on it, move it to the path, and then I'd be able to run my commands. Now the next step line here at 54, this is where we initialize Terraform and TerraGrunt and run our plan step. So I run the TerraGrunt plan with the working directory as where the Terraform configuration files live for that change, which was retrieved all the way up here at line 21 and then back down. And then what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna echo out that path to make sure we get it and then run the TerraGrunt commands based on that plan file. TerraGrunt actually hides the Terraform plan file and a TerraGrunt cache folder. And I have to parse out the auto generated directory names just to be able to find a Terraform plan so I can run the very next stage to run the apply on it. Once the plan file is retrieved and changes have been validated, we have to package up the artifact directory. What this small bash script does, it actually gets the working directory of where you're at right now and then changes into the directory that it needs to and then tars it up, then moves that tarred configuration into the artifact directory we created at the beginning. And then we run another Azure DevOps task, which creates the artifact for us that the next stage consume. And we can see here, this is what the next stage does is for Terraform apply. And where I started to like this Azure DevOps a little bit more is the way you define these depends on the jobs and deployments and pools, and especially environments. Environments for me was another issue. GitLab CI, you can just create manual steps whenever you want and say, when manual or when auto, if you want to make something manual or automated, if you want like a developer to check something or run it manually, your way to do that just with a quick line, say when manual. Azure DevOps, you actually have to create a manual environment. So I create an environment called Terraform Apply Manual. So that way this stage can only be run manually. And what it does, it actually requires one of the users of the repo or this pipeline to validate the check and say everything's good to go, pretty much like a merge request. Now, if we continue down, you have to decompress the tar file, reinstall Terraform and TerraGrunt, change the binary permissions, move it to the path, just to be able to run the Terraform or TerraGrunt apply commands. Now, this is what I was saying about each stage is independent and clean and worries about artifacts. Now that everything's all installed again, we have our artifact, we which is our plan file. We can actually apply the configuration. What this does, it looks at that artifact as it's unpacked and looks for the Terra, Terra Grunt cache folder, which is where our plan file is located. So if you look here, we get that path right here by just running a quick find command, parsing some stuff out, then setting the variable for the cache path. And then our last script is to actually apply the Terra Grunt. And with this said and done, just a little bit here, we can apply our changes. So 134 lines to run two commands. Overall, I think pipelines have their place, but for infrastructure, I think they're still too brittle. Like you can see here, there's not much more refactoring you can do to make this simpler, just to run Terraform plan, Terraform apply, or Terraform plan, or Terraform apply. It, it's too complicated. And it's also brittle. For example, if we go back up into this plan file, where we generate it, if I can find it, uh, ch -ch 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 -ch, right here. I'm not sure what happens if, say if I push two changed modules into this pipeline, if I change the S3 bucket and my VPC, then the git diff is gonna have two different modules and I'm not sure how you can loop this over, create different artifacts for it and handle it appropriately. So to use something like this, it requires discipline and has to take what's called a trunk 
development based approach, which means you have to do small incremental changes. So if you had anything to change, you wouldn't change your whole network and your application and your database all at the same time. You should rule these out incrementally. So you would change your S3 bucket, you would add a VPC, and then it'd be done. Then you add your RDS, and then this would be pretty strong. But like I said, that requires the discipline to do that every time and to make sure everybody's on the same page. If it were up to me, I think Terraform should only be ran in a pipeline for integration testing using, let's say, Terraform Kitchen or anything like that, where it spins up a temporary environment and you run unit tests against it to make sure everything created correctly or test the web server it's running and then it destroys everything. I can see the pipeline working there. But the steps to create this stuff, I think always should be manual. And I think it limits mistakes. Now, just to prove to you that this actually works, we're going to go over here to GitHub, hit this little button here, and we're going to give this a new tag. We're going to call this tag testing equal demo test. And don't forget your comma. Update S3 for new tag. And we're going to commit this directly to the development branch. Commit those changes. Go back over here to the pipelines. We can see this not running right now. That's because I pushed it to the development branch. But if I just hit run pipeline and go to development, it's gonna grab the latest commit and then hit run. Now we can see that it's running. Now if we go in here, just give it a second as your DevOps takes some time. Now that the plan's done, we can see here where that manual step is where it says waiting, Terraform apply waiting. One approval needs your review before this run can continue to Terraform apply, hit review. I approve this message and configuration. Approve it. And we can see it's applied. And then there's the outputs. Let's go over to my bucket, the logging bucket. Properties. Tags. There it is. Testing demo test. And there it is. Bob's your uncle. And it works. Like I said, I don't think Terraform and Terragrunt is robust enough to run cleanly in pipelines, especially as environments get bigger and more complex. However, I think Terraform and is good to run in a pipeline if you're already creating resources. For instance, if you're creating standardized AWS environments in like my account, ve account vending machine, then it makes sense to use Terraform and Terragrunt in there with no issues at all because it's not a dynamic environment. You're just saying, hey, I want to create a new AWS account and I want to put these resources in it. That's fine. And then on top of that, you would have a separate pipeline or manual deployments for your Terraform files. But for creating, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to my ramblings. I know I might have probably went off page a little bit here, but to be honest, I lost all the footage from everything I did to my time lapses up to this because I crashed my MBR record. And this is the best thing I can come up with is just to showcase it. And I hope you enjoyed it. If not, give me a thumbs down. If you did, give me a thumbs up and uh, stay tuned and have a good one.